Hello and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're going to solve this problem on the board, what we have labeled already with a few different currents. So we have a 20 volt source, we have an 11 milliamp uh, current source, we have a 10 volt source which is actually kind of backwards so we have minus and plus. Uh, this, also, this problem also has larger resistors so this is 1 kilo ohm, 1000 ohms, here's 25,000 ohms and some larger resistors here. Now we have already pre-labeled I1, I2, and I3, and this problem very simply states, let's calculate I1, I2, and I3. How do we find the currents there? Um, you'll quickly figure out trying to do this thing by other methods that it's going to be very difficult to use, you know, just regular Kirchhoff's laws or whatever. I mean, you can serve, solve any circuit using, using those methods, but you have lots of equations, lots of unknowns. So we're going to, again, turn our attention to the node voltage method. I'm also going to say up front here, though, that uh, this problem is kind of like what you get into on a test. You know, you can solve a few simple node voltage problems in your homework. You're like, piece of cake, I've got it. You write your equations, you write your unknowns. Bam, you solve those equations, you get your node voltages, you're done. You're ready for the test. But what you're going to find is that your instructors are going to start throwing stuff like this at you. It looks simple at first, but as I walk through it with you, it'll make you scratch your head once. And when you, when you see the aha moment, you'll be like, oh, that's so easy. Well, that's how it always is in, in math and science. I mean, you know, things seem difficult, scratch your head, and then you, then you say, oh, aha, I get it, after somebody explains it to you. So my advice to you here is if you don't see, when we get to the point in the circuit where you realize it's a little difficult, um, if you don't see it, that's okay. We learn by doing. And if you do see it, way like if you look at this and say, oh, I get it immediately what to do, then you know, congrats, you're ahead of the game. So let's take it one step at a time and solve this just like we're going to solve any node voltage problem because that's what you're going to do on a test. You're going to go by that memorization of what to do. Let's do it just like we've been taught and then we'll see if any roadblocks come up along the way and I'll just give you a hint, there will be one at least. So where are our essential nodes? Okay, so well here's definitely one. So I'll call this node one. Whoops, let me erase this guy right here and just put a big one with a circle. So I'll call that guy node one. What other essential nodes do we have? Um, well, this, if you look at the bottom of the circuit, you might say, well, this is an essential node, and it is. So this is sort of an essential node down at the bottom, but realistically speaking, I'll just tell you right now, we're going to use this as our reference. So we're not really going to, and that makes the most sense because there's no resistors down here. We like our reference to be on the bottom if we can. And it, and it interconnects with a lot of different things. So it, it makes sense to have it at the bottom. So what other essential node do we have? Well, you might say, and this is sort of the first quote unquote roadblock, you'd say, well, I have an essential node here and an essential node here, bam. If you make that mistake on a test, it's gonna cost you, you know, because you really have to look at what you have here to, to make sure. What you have here for this node is you have a current source and a, and a resistor, but the thing connected over here is just a wire. Right? So it doesn't really count as an essential node by itself. It, it, at least it's not too compelling as an essential node because usually for these essential nodes we have three or more actual devices, resistors, current sources, whatever, connected together. Here we don't quite have that, so it doesn't quite fit that cookie cutter mold. We have current source, resistor, and sort of nothing here. And then we look over here and we say, well, this is certainly an essential node, right? But when you look carefully, you have a resistor connected to a voltage source, connected to, again, nothing. So this is sort of kind of an essential node, and this is sort of kind of an essential node, but they don't really follow our definitions of what we've seen in past problems. So that's what's going to happen on your test. You'll get a problem, and you'll be like, well, this is a little different. I've never quite seen this before. It's kind of like algebra. You get to equations that you haven't ever seen before. So as